Spherical Studios. I thought I'd give you a lockdown walk around just so you can see the place for a bit of fun because I'm bored. So here we are arriving in Circle Studios up the corridor. Oh, what's there? We'll take a look back there on the way back again. First things first, into the control room. And it's a Northward Acoustics designed control room. Uh, what have we got here? ATC monitors, SCM 110s. Uh, I've taken the Nearfields home so I could do some editing work. Uh, API desk, interesting API desk this one's a API 1608 Mark 1 API 1608 but the center section here has been populated uh, um, by Audio Maintenance Limited in Manchester who uh, Colin uh, AML is an old Neve engineer and he has repackaged 1073s, Neve 1073s in a 500 series format uh, um, and we have a the uh, uh, the Neve preamps um, can either come direct out or um, also have a mix in, and that can be taken through a pair of Neve two two five fours, also repackaged by Colin, or it can go straight to this Neve uh, mix bus, which is uh, in the in the uh, Oaks uh, um, part uh, of the desk. Now each of these Neve ten seventy threes, eight of them, also have. Uh, well, five of them certainly at this point have uh, Harrison EQs and most importantly Harrison filters because they're pretty stunning. And at the moment, I've got in uh, in this section of the desk, I've got a pair of um, Avidus's new new EQs and a very old Angus uh, uh, thumbwheel EQ. That's all fed to uh, um, these Penny and Joyles faders. And as I say, that can either go direct to our burl converters, which are around the back here. We have two, two burl uh, motherships, uh, um, or it can go uh, and come out by itself straight out of the, uh, the need section of the desk, or it can be fed into the oak section of the, uh, the desk via these pair of Neve 1080 ones also by AML. So fundamentally, we've got a 40 channel hybrid desk which is rather nice. Um, over in the back there, uh, um, you can see there's, there's a monitor and then through there we can see our main live room, which we'll go and see in a second. Hello to Manly Audio, you're fabulous. And also, hello to Joshua Ruben Eve. So Ivana and Josh, awesome people, buy their gear. What else have we got here? Oh, we've got a Avid controller and a keyboard. And then, oh, some exciting things down here. We've got some preamps. Uh, um, Chandler's EMI TG2, a pair of AMS Neve 1073s, uh, Great River, which is a lovely, lovely thing, Pacifica, a pair of Pacificas, and, uh, and a 1081 up there. And then over the back here is our, mainly our compressors, uh, compressors from Retro, a pair of old vintage ones from URE, um, Listen Grow VR1s, some Teletronics LA2As, then we've got uh, right down at the bottom, very unusual one, a pair of Fairchild EQs, and they're from Fairchild cutting lathes. And then we've got some other rods and swords from Thermionic Culture, a distressor there, and, uh, and a 2254. And then we've got a bunch of EQs in that section. Oh, we forgot to mention EQs in the desk. So fundamentally, this side of the desk uh, um, is API EQs, and we've got 16 API EQs there, and you can see that I haven't actually reset some of them since my last session in here, which is a bit naughty. Joe would never have allowed that to happen. And then on this side, we have Avidus E27s, which are one of my very, very favorite EQs, because the uh, that high section in particular is just beautifully smooth. And uh, yeah, so as I was saying, a stack of EQs over the, there, uh, some odds and swords, guitars, and uh, oh, this is an this is an unusual one. This is uh, actually an ancient Roman instrument, which uh, some of you might have seen. I've been doing a very significant project recently, and that's actually made out of a turtle shell. Very, very unusual instrument indeed. No studio is of course complete without the obligatory lava lamp. Uh, um, and then we have, as I said, this is a Northwood Acoustics 
design studio and this is a feature of North of Acoustic Studios. Uh, uh, um, what you can't see is what's actually going on in this control room because everything's hidden by this red material. But I can tell you that this control room is flat down to something ridiculous like uh, 6 hertz or something. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, oh, there's a Moog Sub Fatty here. These are some really pretty lights. I got these from the Theatre Royal when they switched over to LEDs and I had uh, uh, a new light source put in them so it's just a standard uh, 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 bulb in there now but some, they polished up beautifully. I got them polished up and they polished up just beautifully. Got a pair of those. So let's have a look uh, next door in the main library. So through here this is our biggest library. And uh, this room's, uh, you can't probably see in, by this uh, by this iPhone camera, but uh, this main live room is 29 feet long at its longest, and it's about 24 feet wide at its widest. Um, we've got an 18 foot ceiling, and I'm uh, not sure if you can see that, but it goes up uh, to a ridge line in the centre. But each of those uh, ridges on the way up there are a very slightly different angle and that uh, extends the reverb time of the room very significantly. Um, over in the corner there, that's where, uh, that's where audio comes, in, uh, comes into the room and, uh, and we're running a hearback system in our machine room, which I forgot to show you, uh, um, back in the control room there. And, uh, and then obviously the uh, um, uh, box back out again. You can see through the main control room there, and, uh, and a whole forest of cables. So uh, what else have we got in here? Uh, as, as I said, this is called the, we call this the big room. Um, really cool thing about, one really cool thing about the design in this room is uh, each of these panels is designed to change the reverb time of the room. So if we flip them around, on this side we have binary amplitude diffusion. Uh, um, which uh, extend, in fact, I can hear, having just turned that one, I can hear the room response changing. That makes the, the room both brighter and extends the, re, the, uh, the reverb time of the room. Now we have two, four, six, 12 of those, no, not 12, 10 of those in this room. Uh, um, so you can, we can change the reverb time and the tone, tonality of this room very, very significantly. Uh, um, so yeah binary amplitude response, their absorption on this side, just for the avoidance of doubt. What else have we got over here? So over in this corner, we've got our piano and about two dozen mic stands, um, a bunch of gobos, which you can see four very significantly sized gobos. I think these gobos are about eight foot tall and uh, four and a half feet wide or something. Uh, um, so yeah, a beautiful, beautiful piano. One very well-known piano player, uh, um, who I shall not mention, has said that's the nicest upright piano that he has ever played. Sadly, I can't get to it because of all of the mic stands, so you can't hear it right now. Over here in the corner, we have a booth, very quite a significantly sized booth. Again, quite hard to see quite how big this booth is, but a rough estimate, it's something like 11 feet by 9 feet, uh, this booth. Again, very high ceiling, I think it goes up to 15 feet. Uh, what else we've got here? A bunch of headphones, cables, uh, a couple of microphones, a couple of ribbon microphones by AEA hanging there in their cases. Uh, some guitar heads that are, uh, have been discarded in here and it looks like the last session in here was, was guitars. So yeah, so there's our, there's our big room. You can hopefully hear the, the tonality of the room as I walk out into the room. Oh, uh, what else have we got? vibe lights we can change the vibe of the room very significantly by uh um, these are um uh, we can change the color of these lights very very easily and different sets of lights all around the room you can see how many sets of lights we've got right here so yeah there you go there's a there's our big room moving on now uh, um into the corridor and we have actually three other live rooms and two other control rooms in this building. I'll not show you the other control rooms right now. Um, but uh, just to give you some context, this room's a very different sounding room. So if the if the big room is quite open and, and natural sounding, this this room's a quite a dark sounding room. It's uh, entirely made of maple. Again, you probably can't see the size of it, but it's something like six meters by five meters, and it has a 15 foot high ceiling at its highest. 
uh, again absorption in the corners here and that flips back to binary amplitude diffusion on the other side and uh, yeah it's a dark sound room one of my favorite rooms actually this this room uh, I think uh, dark sounding early nirvana drums or something like that very cool sounding vibe um, oh, talking of vibes you can see that every room in this building is actually standing on its own on its own separate piece of concrete which is floated on uh, on a, a piece of uh, well let's just call it rubber uh, I'm quite a technical piece of rubber but a piece of rubber nonetheless and every room in the building is entirely separated from the other and in fact the only thing in these this building that is solid is uh, is one this wall and two this corridor and nothing else touches this wall or this corridor these rooms don't in fact touch they're uh, 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 the fact that they don't touch is cleverly hidden by that piece of skirting board which doesn't touch anything and up at the top it's cleverly hidden you can actually see um, the ceiling doesn't touch this side of the building at uh, these rooms on this side at all so up there we've got uh, quite a significant attic space maybe we'll turn that into uh, into some other rooms at some some point moving moving along we find another very different sounding room again this one's our stone room uh, similar size to the wooden room, though the ceiling's higher. I think we have an 18 foot ceiling in here. Uh, um, and effectively we have an eight ton stone diffuser. And if we walk in here, you'll hear that this is quite an unusual sounding room. It's a, it's a mid-scooped room. It's tight, but it's quite mid-scooped. So uh, uh, very interesting, both tonality and a reverb response. And then back up here to the final room, uh, th this room's basically a very long reverb room. At the moment, you're not going to be able to see that because it is absolutely full of drums, guitar cabinets, all sorts of junk. Um, it's often used, this room, we have a white screen, green screen and black screen, which can be fitted up at the back there. Also some binary amplitude diffusion over here. Uh, uh, um, yeah, but uh, there you go. That is your tour. Oh, that's some famous names and faces. That I've walked through here. Many of you'll know Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. Uh, we got the enemy over here, and uh, is this oh hairy bikers? There you go. So um, yeah, uh, thanks for coming, visiting Circle Studios, and uh, hope to see you in here sometime. Cheers. Bye bye.